I'm on. Good afternoon. My name is Enrique Zamora. I'm the Chief Special Magistrate for the City of Miami Beach. I'll be hearing cases this afternoon. I'm going to ask those of you who uh, are going to be testifying this afternoon to please stand up to be sworn in. Thank you. Are the inspectors back there going to be saying anything? I hope not. No, no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Thank, Thank you. you. May we see it? Okay. Do we have any, any attorneys? No. I'm sorry? Do we have any attorneys? Uh, no, I don't believe there's any attorneys here. Am I correct? Okay. Then uh, okay. let's try with uh, 31, right? Okay. When I call your case, please come up to the podium. Can you stand to the left of me? The left of me, which is this podium right here. Okay, uh, page 15, number 31 on the top, SMA 19, 02, uh, 2066 for 1995 Calais Drive. Is someone here for that case? Miami International LLC. Come to the podium, sir. Okay. Good afternoon, sir. Your name, please? Paolo Scattareggia. Okay. I? Yes, that I don't hear. Would you say? You. Paolo Scattareggia. I'm yeah. the manager Here. of the company that owned the property at the time. Okay. So you. Uh, oh, that's a long name. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thank okay. you. All right. And. What are we here on? Is this the first time up? Yes. I mean, is me it? is the first time. I think that actually there was a, a hearing before the COVID, the and, and uh, I was sick, so I sent the person who was taking care of our permit that she didn't show up. Okay. So then. we reappealed, and then everything was postponed until today. All right. So let me hear from the city first. Mr. Vega, please. Amando Vega, City of Miami Beach, Court Enforcement Officer. Uh, this is uh, under custody of the record. This is a uh, full width. Sanitation case of Fort Worth uh, for trash that was at the uh, location that was picked up by the city. Okay. And have you the seen the property opinion. lately? I'm sorry? Have you been to the property lately? No, I haven't been to the property, but uh, because, I mean, the city picked up all the garbage that was there. Oh, the, the city picked up the garbage? Yes, okay. part of it, and also according to the notes of Mr. Rios, Officer Rios, some uh, of uh, some of the garbage was also picked up by a uh, private. Oh yeah, I'll, gent, I'll uh, explain that. person. Okay. All right. Can I? Yes. I wrote something, so it's easy if I write. If I read, is that okay yes, with you? So okay. I can explain clearly. Okay. Okay. Um, on Monday, April 15, 2019, we were contacted by Code Compliance Officer for the City of Miami Beach, Mr. Jorge Rios, who informed us in person at our office and then by email that on the previous day, Sunday, April 14, 2019, he had, issue, he had issued a, a notice of violation for illegally disposing of industrial and bulky waste. Uh, he noticed uh, like a futon, mattress, and two boxes on the front southwest corner of uh, the property at the location that we we're discussing, Calais, 1995 Calais Drive. And we to remove that within 24 hours. At the time, the property was vacant because we were applying for permits to renovate the property. And so, and it was not the first time that, especially during the weekend, people from neighboring buildings were discarding, discarding garbage and unwanted items in front of our, and even across the fence of our property, taking advantage of the fact that nobody lived there. So we, uh, although we were not responsible for dumping this item, we immediately acted and complied with, the, with this uh, request, and within 24 hours, we removed everything of our, at our expenses. I pictured, this is the first incident of which I picture with the date, that we removed everything. Then on May 1st, wait, wait, 15 wait, days wait, later. Let me, let me, because I, I get a little confused. Yes. You're saying that the garb you had that garbage picked up. Yeah, but this but is this is before me. this is the second violation is the war for which we're here. I just explained this. 
to make you understand the, the sequence of events. So, so you're talking about another Yes, violation. so that was 15 days before, just for you as a, to have a background, and now I'm talking about the one that we're discussing here. So 15 days later, on May 1st, 2019, a new notice of violation for lot clearance was issued by Code Compliance Officer Mr. Gaspar Rodriguez for violation of minimum property maintenance standard for uh, trash and debris throughout the property. The notice of violation gave us 15 days to resolve the, the above mentioned condition uh, from the receipt of the notice of violation. In spite of the fact that the property was vacant, and once again, it was not us who discarded anything in or around the property, and although we had 19 days to comply, we immediately sent somebody the day after, on the morning of May 2nd. We have a video that if you want, I can provide with the date on the phone. And this person removed, the, he did two trips, removed a lot of garbage, but there was an enormous amount of item, so he was going to complete the work on the day after, on May 3rd. Meanwhile, we receive a second, on May 2nd, the day after, when we're already removing things, we received the second notice of violation, which is the one for which we're here, uh, issued by uh, Officer um, Rios, uh, who, uh, uh, for sanitation, with immediate compliance, uh, for discarded furniture, miscellaneous trash and debris throughout the front yard and southwest cor corner of the property and the sidewalk. Uh, so we, uh, he also sent us an email stating that he was sent out by superiors to issue a sanitation violation, which carried out an immediate fine of $1,000. So uh, this, while we're already in the process of, of removing everything from the notice that we got the day before, for which we have 15 days. So we complete... When, we, I'm sorry, when were the 15 days up? I'm sorry? When were the 15 days up? The 15 days would have been off on the, from the 1st, the 16th of May. So the first, we received the first violation. And we had 15 days until the 16th. But the second, we were already removing things. But it was too much. So we removed most of it. And then on the third... And I have pictures and proof of that on video and, phone and, and, uh, and pictures data on the phone. We went to remove the rest. So what happened is, and then by the night of the third, everything was clear. So what happened is that um, we have cleared everything. And then we appealed because we, fa we wanted to explain the situation what happened. It was not us discarding this. And that's really several other times when we have no violation, we already removed things that we found uh, being there. So at this point, we paid a person to go every other night and myself passed off often there to see if something was happening. And more than once, especially in the weekend, we had this problem again and we removed things at our expenses. Then on August 21, 2019, I met with Captain, now Major David Alespreya of the Miami Beach Police and I asked if he could help in this situation and he asked me to send him an email to which he responded that I would have been contacted by Officer Julio Blanco in the Miami Beach Police to look into this. And I have the, the copy of the emails if you want. When he reached out to me, Officer Blanco promised to keep an eye on the property. So we honestly did all we could to avoid further illegal dumping or at least to be able to promptly clear out the property in order not to violate any code. Also because for us this was a big waste of time and money. At this point there was an administrative hearing that was set for September 19, 2019 and then moved to the September 26th before the special master here in Miami Beach. I was sick, so I instructed the person who was in the meanwhile uh, taking care of the necessary permits to do uh, the work to renovate the building to, pre to, to pre uh, represent us. After the hearing, we found out that she didn't show up. And so we had to request another appeal, which was granted to us. And, and, oh, and, and after the first appeal, we were denied since we didn't show up. And at the $1,000 fine, there was an added pickup fee from sanitation department of $1,324.50. We didn't even know that somebody went because we cleared the lot. So maybe they went during the day when we're removing things on the third, so we didn't even know that. But by the time night of the third, we had removed everything from the property. So at the end, we were charged with $2,324.50. So we were granted another um, hearing, then it was postponed twice and then canceled for the, for the pandemic. So now we're here. So. We, uh, I, I respectfully request that the fines and the charges related to this violation be cancelled since, since we were not the people responsible for this violation, but in any case, as property owners, we always immediately comply with any violation issued, and in many other occasions, we had to clear the lot at our expenses when illegal dumping of trash and other items took place. The building was empty, there was no work going on, so it wasn't us dumping the, 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 the trash and the debris, <coughs> excuse me, the debris, but we also complied every time because we understood where the property, uh, the owner of the property. We showed good faith because we, act, we acted diligently by even paying a person to pass by the property, contacting the Miami Beach police and trying to, you know, be on top of everything and, and avoid any uh, uh, violation of codes. 
And then the last thing is that we were given a notice of violation on May 2nd when we were already diligently clearing up the lot after the violation that we got, the notice of violation we got the day before, which gave us 15 days to do that. We didn't even know that the sanitation department sent somebody. We went to pick up everything. They must have picked up something between our trip. So we really feel like we have been the victim of the situation. And I understand I'm not blaming the city, but we ask, please, if we can you know, uh, help in this situation, which has been really, really uh, you know, uh, aggravating for us. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, first of all, you are the owner of the property. You're responsible. No, not me. I'm the manager of the company. But but yes, yes, yes. You, I represent. You're yes. responsible. Yes. It doesn't matter that that was done by somebody else. And we understand There's that. There's nothing that, that we can do about it. The I only know. thing that, I, from what you said, that I want to know is, uh, uh, Mr. Vega, he says that he had 15 days and that uh, the city picked up the, that uh, and the city picked up the, the uh, that is a light clearance violation. That's a completely different violation. It's a different violation. Yes, it is. This is a uh, this is an immediate fine. This is a full width violation, and the 15 days for a light clearance. Okay. Uh, it's a property maintenance violation. Mr. Yes. Rothstein, you want to chime in? Anything you want to say? No, you're right. Okay. All right. Okay. So, I just want to see, understand how the 15-day thing works with what happened. It, it, was that, that, that the same, he claiming that is the same garbage that he had 15 days to pick up. That's what I want to understand. That, I don't have the answer to that question, Your Honor, because I, I wasn't there. I'm but, not the one that issued the violation. Uh, oh, I, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, think, <but> <laughs> I think the question is about the 15 days is confusing because apparently, and I'm not familiar with the case, Ryan Thomas, administrator, a lot clearance cases typically to mow the grass, keep the private property clean. Mm -hmm. They give them 15 days initially. After that, if they don't do it, the city has a contractor that comes and mows the grass and removes mm -hmm. garbage from the private property. In this case, it was a fourth width. So right separate, I want to see the pictures. Are these the photos? The sanitation, yeah. yeah. Sanitation, bringing out the garbage. Separately, apparently, a fourth width violation was, issued. was issued that was just for garbage that was piled up probably in a spot usually yeah so they determined it to be a hazard at the time for whatever reason whether it's rodents or blocking something or or uh, food and stuff like that usually in this case it looks like it was probably a their fear of rodents and stuff because it looks like uh so so, so I understand one once it's fourth width that's an immediate the, fine. The, the fine is already imposed no matter Fine's what. Is imposed, that correct? And then the sanitation department comes and cleans it up, and then they have the option to appeal it within a certain number of days, which is what he's done. So that's the kind of the difference between the two types of cases. They're similar because they both have garbage as part of the cleanup or the compliance, but one is more to clean up the whole property, uh, mow, remove any garbage on the property. It, this seems like at a later date there were more, you know, more than normal amount of garbage, so they determined it to be a life safety issue or a nuisance, and uh, decided to have it removed immediately to remedy the problem instead of waiting for them to comply with a normal sanitation. Mm -hmm. Where would you give them the 24 hours? Does that help? <laughs> Definitely, I, I just again needed to. So, do you understand that once the fourth width is given to you, or the company you represent, the fine is already automatic. Go ahead. Let me say something. I understand what they're saying, but the issue is this. They gave a violation, the first one, the one that gave 15 days to compliance uh, for trash and debris throughout the property. We went the morning of the second, the morning after, and I have pictures and video that I can show you. And, and we went actually, the person went very early in the morning. So we got the, the notice on the first. The morning of the seventh, we went there and there was an enormous amount of, of, of trash. New we, trash that was left started, there. We did two trips to get everything out. And I have the video and the, 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 the message of the guy say, I cannot bring everything out now, I'll, I'll do a second trip. And they're saying that the second, the day that we're removing everything, there is a different violation for something else. I'm, I'm sorry, but maybe there was some confusion, but I don't, it's not that five days later, People, we cleared the lot on the third, and people dumped something a few days later. This is the, the day after we started to remove everything, and we proved. And then that day, it was issued another one with an immediate fine. So we couldn't understand what was happening. And we didn't even know that they went to pick up things during the day, because we were doing that. So that's why maybe there was some confusion, but it's not something that has been issued a few days later. It's been issued 
the first, in the morning of the, of, the, of the second, we started to remove everything. So how can it be a different violation and a different, I mean, it's a different violation, but a different, uh, uh, different things that were there. We started to remove them anyway on the second. So that's, I mean, maybe there is a bit of confusion. I'm, I'm not saying you know, anything did anything wrong, but we also, I think, were penalized unfairly because we immediately acted, did what we had to do, and we were informed after the case of sanitation, go in and pick up something. And, and it had to be the same thing because it was the first and we went the morning of the second. Inspector Vega, is it $1,000 for the first offense and $1,324.50 for the sanitation pickup? I walk order, yes. Okay, so it's 2,324.50, am I correct? That is correct. Thank you. You're welcome. <clears throat> I cannot let the city incur the cost of picking up the trash. It's not happening. Not happening. You, you represent the owner, and perhaps you needed to get a bigger truck and get these things out of there as soon as possible. Uh, this is what I'm going to do, and I, you know, maybe I'm not supposed to do it, but I'm going to do it. I'm going to waive the fine, but you have to pay the city the cost incurred in picking up the trash. That's what I can do, sir. Okay? All right. All right. The only question is how, how long do you need, how long does he have to pay the fine? Actually, yeah. can I interject? I mean the cost. The, we, we sold the property a year ago, and we kept this money in escrow with the title company, because I said, until this is resolved and I go into the, from the hearing, we cannot. So the money is there, but the other company asked me at the end of this if we'll have something in writing, so they will pay directly the fine or whatever, the, the amount to the city uh, that we, you determine. You get an order from me, but uh, not today. But I, I, I give you. Maybe in a few days we'll receive something on the mail? No. Today, how can you receive uh, something? Uh, like uh, you know, after today I have to go home because my wife is waiting for me. <laughs> you know? No. Okay. No, no, no working I don't time. understand how it's going to work so that I can give the, 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 I, the I'm document. Go, I'm going to give you 30 days, okay. September 13th. Okay. Okay. It is likely, you know, first of all, the, I will not sign the order until maybe Tuesday of next week. Oh, okay. Okay, because there's a whole bunch of cases. This lady prepares the orders. I get them. I review them and sign them. Okay. But that will be today's Thursday. Okay. okay? So you will have a probably. I'll pay. We'll pay. And then once we have the receipt that we pay and your order will come, we show to the company. That the we'll payment pay. goes to code compliance, yeah. so you don't pay this office. I mean, and you've got 30 days, so. 30 days, which is September 13th. I know you're going to pay it before. September 13th, from September 13th, 30 days. No, no, you have to, you have to pay it before September 13th. Oh, that's right. September 13th is in 30 days. That's yeah, next sorry. month. I was thinking of, okay. of August 13th, yeah. Okay. All right. I, that's fair. Okay. All right. Can Thank you, you clarify how much is the fine, so. He knows the amount. Yeah, I, I know it. it. It'll be detailed in the order, but the fine, as per the chief. It's not the fine, it's cost. I want to make sure. Three, two, I'm waiving the fine, but he's paying the cost. Okay. 132450, which was the one, cost. 1324.50. Yes. Excellent. Okay. Yeah, it's clear. That's the sanitation pickup fee. Excellent. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Sure. All right. We need a little hole here, you know. All right. Okay. That's okay. Uh, number 32, SMA 19, 2233 for 3120 Collins Avenue. This is a special event, G3120 Collins LLC. Is there anyone here in this case? You know what we should do? We should ask the people to come up. That's and fine. Get uh, the city's asking, we're asking if it can be continued because our officer had to leave today, uh, emergency FML. All right, we'll continue it at the city's request. Yeah. Uh, but I'm not sure it's when we can continue to. I'll, I'll let uh, Cindy tell me. Ding. Um, well, uh, You want to do September? Want to do September twenty-third? Sounds fine to me. Is that okay with you? Or? Good with me. Okay with me too. Thank you. Okay. So, so we have this gentleman, this lady here. We don't know. One. Let's get the lady first. Please come forward to the microphone, 
and tell us which is your case number so we can look for your file. S SMA 2020-02281. Are you okay to, to speak with your mask on? Okay, no problem. Thank you, I, I appreciate just it. wanted you to... I, no, 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 that's right. Sorry. That's on I'm page sorry. 17, number 40. 1755 Meridian Avenue, am I correct, ma'am? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay. Hey, and ma'am, your name is? Margarita Crown. Let's see. So, and you're representing Crown's Lawn Services LLC, is that correct? Yes, sir, I'm the owner. You're the owner, okay. Yes. So you're representing it. Yes. That's right. Okay. Uh, so, being an appeal, let me hear from the city first, and then I'll give you a chance to respond, okay? Okay. City so may proceed. Good afternoon, Your Honor. Uh, Al Pena, City of Miami Beach Co-Compliance Department. This is for a violation that was issued on the 11th of May, 2020. The uh, code compliance case number is CC 2020-08432. It is in violation of section 46-92D, unlawful for any person to use leaf blowers or any other means to sweep, cast, or throw, or discard any trash, grass cuttings, yard maintenance debris or other objects or substances into any of the gutters, drains, sewers, or upon any adjacent public or private property. Um, originally, the complaint came in. Uh, I was first approached by the Public Works Associate Director, Mr. Fink, who stated that he witnessed and has video evidence of the man with leaf blower blowing leaves into the street. Upon my arrival, there was a man with a leaf blower I approached him, I asked for his name, Mr. James Crown, an employee for Crown's Lawn Service, blowing leaves into the street. This was initially observed by the assistant director and myself. Uh, there is photo and video evidence of this, which I would like to uh, submit as evidence. Do you have a copy that you can show yes. this lady yes, I, so she can I see do. it? Um, you uh, want to look at it? I also have the video evidence. Um, I would like to submit this for evidence as well, if I may. Okay. Al, do you have the, um, the amount of the fine? Yes. Um, and is it a first offense? It is a first offense, and the, it has an initial civil fine of $1,000. Thank you. Okay. I'll stamp it in. Thank you. <clears throat> Anything else from the city? Ah, uh, no, that's all, Your Honor. Yeah, it's your turn, please. Your Magistrate. Um, According to James, he said that it was a very windy day and he probably didn't know that he wasn't supposed to use a blower. And um, we have been servicing this property for two years. After this incident, uh, we were canceled. So we... Well, I, I understand, it's just that and Apparently, we, we no longer service it, so what I'm asking is to um, cancel the $1,000 or... Wait, but you see, huh? it happened, the violation Of happened. course, of course it happened. I understand. So, so, you know, basically what the ordinance say is that if it happens, it's $1,000. Okay. You know, I, I, you know, I, I, when you appeal, I thought that you were going to say, no, it didn't happen. There was something else. But if it happened. Well, it was during, um, you know, last year or so. We just appeal it. Okay, thank you. I know I'm not supposed to lower fines, but... Sometimes I feel like I want to do it. Well, there, there has to be good cause, Sean, and, and whatever your honor, um, you know, within your discretion, 
I don't know. Um, I mean, the violation was admitted. Um, the fines attached to the fines, it's a violation of the city code uh, 30 dash um, 92 subs paragraph D. Um, the activity was admitted, so I, I don't know. The city, you know, the city's asking for the full, you know, the appeal be denied and the fines be paid. It is, I, there's really, I'm sorry, but there's nothing I can do. Okay, uh, how long do I have to pay it? How long do you need? Uh, 90 days. 90 days. I give you 90 days. It's okay. November 12th. Okay. okay. Where do I go or are they going to? Well, that has to be answered by this lady here to my left. Code oh, will be invoicing it. In, um, code compliance will invoice you. You'll get an order in the mail. Okay. Just what's, what was discussed today. Okay. And then you, I don't know how their setup is, if you can go to their office, if you can call them. That's something you can uh, discuss with uh, Ms. Thomas. Do I mail it in? Or? Well, she can, she'll give you direction okay. on that. But it doesn't come to the special master okay. office. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, sir, in the blue, could yes. you come forward? Thank you. Please tell us uh, your case number, sir. Yes, uh, good afternoon. Case number SMA 2020-02264. That is 2912 uh, Collins Avenue? Yes. Okay. That is number 38. Number 38, okay, that's SMA 2022-264-2912 Collins Avenue. I got an email from Ms. Thomas uh, letting me know that the city is asking for a continuance because the police officer assigned to this case is not available. Okay, all right. This is the, um, I'm sorry, what page are we on? Page 16, number 38 at the bottom. Thank you, I'm sorry. That's okay. Yeah, this was uh, issued by a police officer. Um, we contacted the police officer. I think we included the email in your file that he wasn't able to come today, so he asked for a continuance, if that was okay. okay. <clears throat> so you understand the city is asking for a continuance. Okay. I grant one continuance to either party. Next time or up, if the city's not ready, I dismiss the violation. So there we go. I will grant the continuance. At the city's request, and next time you're here, either it goes forward or it's gone. So okay. when when is this going to be? You want September the 23rd? September 23rd. Okay, okay. I'll notify the police officer too. Is, is that okay for the police officer to be here? On the I have no idea what the schedule is. Well, yeah. let, let us know. If yeah. not, we'll change it and we'll let you know. If you cannot be on that date, we'll do okay. some other time. I'll okay? send him an email. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, you're both together. I thought you were. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, so we go back to the beginning. Yes, 33. Okay, um, page 15, number 33, SMA 19. 2237 for 605 Lincoln Road. It's a sanitation appeal. So it's a no show. It's a no show. Who, who's the, oh. I have service, by the way. There's service, there's no one here. In this case, it's an appeal, right? Yes, Your Honor. Well, uh, <laughs> no one here to, to send the appeal, so uh, is there anything in particular you want to say? Besides your name on the record? Good afternoon, Your Honor. Josh Regarding City, May Beach. I'm the issuing officer of the case. Uh, it's a fourth with violation, Your Honor. It um, comes with immediate fine. Uh, there were no added costs from sanitation because it was uh, removed by the city before, um, removed by the waste management before the city could get to it. So just straight $1,000 fine. All right. So the appeal is denied. And I don't, I, this is with prejudice. I don't want this to be brought again before me. This was the one chance and has been denied, okay? Right. And when do they have to pay the thousand dollars? And this is a first offense, am I correct? Yes. Okay. And during sixty days, October thirteenth. Okay. Gotcha.
Thank you. Thank Number you. 34, SMA 19, 2239 for 850 Meridian Avenue. This is a right away. I don't know. Hold on a second. Good afternoon. I'm the custodian of records. Co compliance officer Gaspar Rodriguez. Okay. This is for, uh, uh, before you go forward, uh, I don't seem to have service. Did so you guys post it? Can you tell us if, if the notice for we the never, was yeah. posted? Of course, uh, according to the case, there was no 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 uh, notice to appear given to us to post. Say we need to reset. What did he say? There was no they, notice they, in the they, case. They did not get a there was no note there. in the case saying that there was a notice to appear given to code to post. Well, I mean, there's, oh. a, there's a notice here. Maybe you never got a copy of it, but you know, if, if we didn't. It was mailed, and then it, it has nothing has come back from what I see. Okay. Well, um, I'd, also, I'd also like to say this specific case, which is uh, CC 2019-08080, which is for you, uh, for Special Masters, SMA 2019-02239. This is a second offense. The first offense, which was issued the day before on the 13th, which is CC 2019. I apologize. The one we're currently seeing is 84. The one I'm speaking of, the first offense, is CC 2019-08080, which is issued on the 13th of December, which is SMAC 2020-00048, has not been serviced yet. It has not been, has not been seen. So they've appealed both of them, but the first offense, you haven't scheduled it yet because they appealed it after they appealed the second right. somehow? Right. So if there was a way, if you are going to move it forward, it, we could get both we cases put heard. Put them both together. Yeah. Because this is actually the second offense. The first offense is not scheduled so yet. So what's the other case number? I'm sorry. This one here was an initially scheduled, uh, but whatever. What, what's the other case number? Yeah, the, the, the first offense is is a CC 2019. No, the S SMA. Oh, oh the SMA, okay. It's a SMAC 2020-00048. That's the first offense. Let's okay. reset them together. And reset for, how about November? November is good. Sure. Would that be November 18th? Yes. Yeah. And you don't really have to stick just to uh, having her, the same case by me. We can just use somebody else. So, you know, don't feel obligated to reschedule it with me. I didn't hear what you said. said that you don't have to reschedule it with me. You could reschedule it no, with somebody. No, I know. All right, that's right. Okay, 35. All right. Page 16, top 1, SMA 2020, 2247, 5775 Collins. So right away. Okay. It seems like they are... <clears throat> This is the service that we have, that we have service. That's right? good service. Yeah. Anyhow, we do have service. Yes. No one is here. Uh, go ahead, tell me about it. Of course. Uh, good afternoon, Your Honor. City of Miami Beach Co-Compliance Officer Alexander Lacayo. This violation was issued on January 22nd, 2020 for blocking the right of way without a permit, using barriers and cones to conduct construction. Our department received a complaint from the Public Works Department in reference to expired permits. From two days ago, upon my arrival, I met with Bill Suarez, the superintendent of the company Moss and Associates, and advised that the company had an expired permit and was not able to block the right away. Therefore, a violation was issued. The violation is a third offense and carries a fine of $5,000. It's a third offense? Yes, they paid the first two offenses in full. 5000 Yes. Okay. Okay. I'd also like to submit some photos into evidence. All right, the appeal is denied, so... Uh the $5,000 should be paid within uh, 90 days, November 12th. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Number 36. 
SMA 2020-02248 for 950 West 48th Street. It doesn't look like I have service. It does or does not? It does not. Okay, nothing came back. No. Oh, wait a minute. What's that? This here? Oh, no, that's from a prior hearing. What's we don't that? have service in this case, so okay. we have to reset it. Sorry. Thank you, Anna. Um, November? Oh, no, wait a minute. How about October? October 14th. Okay. Okay. <sighs> Number 37, SMA 2020, 2261, 524 Washington Avenue. No service here. Well, wait a minute. What's that case number there? Let me see on that envelope that you have. Okay. <clears throat> we need to reset it. October 14th. October 14th. Okay. Oh, I can see that we have service in this one, so. And on page 17, number 39, SMA 2020, 2270 for 4396 Pine Tree Drive. In this one, we have service, so you may proceed, please. Yes. Good afternoon, Your Honor. Doreen Grand City of Miami Beach, Code Compliance. I'm the issuing officer for case number... SMA 2020-200240, Special Master Case Number, and the sanitation violation number is SV 2020-12995. This was a violation of Section 90-98, uh, placing garbage containers um, facilities on public property. Um, the violation was issued to Jeffrey Stan, property owner, and it, carries a, it was a first offense and carries a fine of $450. $450, okay. Well, I have, I have the pictures here too, so uh, definitely the violation did occur on 45 days to pay, September 28th. Is that all that's owed? Is the 450 no sanitation pickup? Um, these were garbage containers that they were living on public property, so there was no pickup from okay. sanitation. Paid by when, Your Honor? September 28th. And I guess that completes the 130 calendar. So we're going to take about a 20 minute break and we'll be back, okay? Yeah. Thank you all.
Good afternoon. Oh, yes. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Enrique Zamora. I'm the special ma magistrate that is going to be hearing cases this afternoon. Um, since we have some people that have not been sworn in yet, I'm going to ask those of you who have not been sworn in to please stand up to be sworn in. Does it apply to attorneys, Mr. Rob? Thank you, sir. Raise your right hand, please. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Thank you. You may be seated. We're, Sir Howard, you approached. Please, we're taking your case first. Which is page 19, number 48, SMA 2021-02490 for 850 Commerce Street. Good evening, Your Honor. Good afternoon, Your Honor. James Rao with Greensboro Martyr here on behalf of uh, Ponta Miami Beach LP. Your Honor, this is a uh, BTR case. Uh, we've filed an appeal and ultimately uh, we supplied the renewed BTR um, to the clerk and to co-compliance. Seemed as if there was some confusion in the finance department regarding the renewal. Um, although our client was tendering payment for the renewal. For some reason, it was held up. It wasn't due to any monies owed by our client. Ultimately, we got that resolved. And as the renewed so, BTR so, indicates. So, I'm sorry, so I understand you're saying that your client tendered the money on time, but something happened that created this. Uh, yes, the finance. Happened the renewal, if you will. Right, the finance department. Um, actually didn't take they tendered the money the finance department wouldn't accept the payment and ultimately we had to uh, work with the finance department and coordinate the btr getting renewed but our client has been there for years since we helped them get opened and so this uh, is not a new business hasn't changed no they've been there for several years now uh, nothing's changed they just for whatever reason there was some administrative hiccup in the finance department if you, do, is there anything you have, an email or something to show that your client attempted to? Uh, ju uh, just them, uh, just them conveying to us that they, the finance department didn't accept the payment. Okay. Um, it, but the BTR renewal is proof positive that it was renewed uh, for this period. Right. The thing is that if there was a gap, then there was a violation. That's what I'm trying to, to ascertain. Is there anything that the city can tell me to enlighten me? Good afternoon, Your Honor. Sierra Miami Beach Co Compliance Officer Jordan Jarquin. Um, this is for KCC 2021-10573. Um, like he stated, it was for uh, operating the business without a BTR. At the time of the inspection, the business actually had two BTRs that were pending. Um, from what I understand, um, there was a process that they were wanted to change the corporate name and they were changing it to a different BTR. Um, but that BTR was missing some information and that's the reason why finance had the, the payment held up because um, they were still missing some information to approve that BTR. So the violation was issued on April 8th and then the new BTR was issued on May 28th. So about a month and a half later. So. Okay. You know, if, if I may, um, yes. and the, the code compliance inspector wouldn't have known this stuff, so they were just going by what what the I record showed. There, but but, um, the, but the, uh, I just want to point out that the case in this uh, hearing is issued to um, Planta Miami Beach LLC. Right. Our client is uh, Planta Miami Beach LP. It's a limited partnership. I, I think that was some of the confusion that. I, I just I understand what you're saying. Just that I don't have anything in front of me that will confirm what you're saying because you heard it from your client. So that's 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 what I'm having trouble with. Your Honor, if I could just ask my associate um, to just double check and see if there's any correspondence from the finance well, let department. Let me let me set it aside for a second. Go on to other cases, and I'll give you a chance to look into that. And if you have some evidence, then you. We'll recall the case, okay? Thank you, sir. You're welcome. <clears throat> Let's see this gentleman here. Would you approach, please? Uh, tell us your case number so that we can pull the file. 
Good afternoon, Your Honor. Uh, Hector Gonzalez, uh, case number SMA 2020-02292. Okay, that's um, page 17, number 41. Number 41, 43. SMA 2020. I have it here. 2292 for 3720 Chase Avenue. Okay. This is a right away. All right. Um, uh, your name is, sir? Hector Gonzalez. Uh, and you're representing? Uh, Shia Lieberman. I brought a uh, power of attorney. Okay, with a power of attorney. Very well, very well. Um, okay. Let me hear from the city. Uh, good afternoon, Your Honor. Al Peña, City of Miami Beach, Coal Compliance Department. This is in reference to the uh, violation for 3720 Chase Avenue. Uh, the coal compliance uh, number <coughs> is... Uh, C as in Charlie, C as in Charlie, 2020-08494 in violation of section 82-151, uh, a person or entity obstructing or causing to obstruct any street or sidewalk in the city or impeding the general movement of vehicular pedestrian traffic without first obtaining a right of way permit. This was issued on July 7th, uh, 2020. It does carry a civil fine for the first violation. This is a first offense for $500. I have some uh, pictures Please. of the uh, obstruction. Right, it was time. for a concrete pour. I would like to submit these Please as show evidence. Mr. Gonzalez yeah. so that he can yeah. take a look. Okay. Uh, okay. No, you okay with that? No. Yeah, I'm okay with that. We received a uh, complaint uh, from a public works personnel, uh, Sandra Montoya, um, and she advised us of a concrete truck partially blocking the southbound lane of Prairie Avenue. The truck was in the process of doing a concrete pour. This pour is handled by Barrero Concrete uh, Materials Incorporated. When I arrived in the vicinity of the location, uh, I was greeted by public works personnel, Sandra Montoya. Uh, I entered the construction site managed by McKenzie Design and Build and spoke to the pro project manager, Catalina Halier. Um, I showed them the notice of violation, which uh, they signed. Uh, they said that they applied for the permit, but uh, the uh, right-of-way manager for the city, um, Mr. Otniel, uh, was on vacation. Uh, the search, uh, I conducted a permit search and it comes back without an answer. So at the time they did not have a right of way permit. Um, okay. And you have the uh, photos. Any questions you would like to ask? Uh, okay. No. Uh, no. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. So uh, honestly, I'm just surprised it was still even open. Like when I got this notice now, this is the year after, I actually even thought this was already taken care of. Uh, all I brought with me was is the right of way permits that we were able to get after the fact, but they were submitted. I didn't bring the information on when they were submitted. I didn't expect, I didn't well, know the, the date. The problem is that uh, you need to wait until you have the permit. You cannot say, oh, I did it, and here we, you know, it doesn't work that way. No, no, totally understand. I, I just wanted to show you that ever since everything has been in progress and everything has been done correctly, and I can show you here if I can just provide you with this information for your records that we have extended this right of way permit as of even last week. It's like we have been because, uh, let, doing let me, it. Let me mention the second violation is $1,000. Mm -hmm. So that doubles, and, and then the third is $5,000. So it's very important that this doesn't happen again. No, definitely. So uh, that's why I'm asked, uh, trying just in good faith to see if we, don't, if we can avoid the, even the first violation. Yeah, if, if no, I mean, I have to impose the fine, it's $500. I can give you time to pay it. How long do you need? No, no, no. In terms, I, I just wanted to avoid the violation. If, if you're going to give me the violation, uh, I can pay it now. It's not a problem. But I was just trying to see if we can avoid the violation. I mean, again, you needed to have waited until you had the permit in hand. To do it. Uh, even though it was pending, uh, you can't really do that. Because you really didn't know if you were going to get it or not. You finally got it, but I was too late. OK? All right, so, you know, 30 days to pay, Cindy, $500, that'll be September 13th, okay? 
All right. Thank you very much, sir. Your Honor, are you denying their request to yes. appeal? Yes. Okay. And they are adjudicated. Okay. Yes. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. Do I get an invoice? Like, you, how do you, I? <coughs> excuse me. You'll get an order in the mail. Okay. You'll get an you'll get an order in the mail from the special magistrate's office, and you have to pay to code compliance. You're going to have to check with those folks to find out how they will accept payment. And how long do I have to pay? Till uh, September 13th. 13th. 30 days. Understood. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Sir. Uh, sir, please. Your Honors, good afternoon. Uh, Jason case, Jones. Here, Your Honor? Yep. Sorry. We need, we need your case number so that we can pull the file. Got it. It is SMA 2021-02464. Yeah. Uh, that you have two cases. That's number 46 oh, and 47. number 47. Okay. Correct. Correct. So it's SMA 2021-02463 for 1717 Collins Avenue. It's number 46. Oh, okay. He's All got right. it. And, and your name, sir? Uh, Jason Jones, General Manager of Restaurants and Bars, representing Bell's Ebre Enterprises, Surf Comer Hotel. Okay. All right. Uh, let me hear from the city first. Uh, do we take them together or we take one case at a time? Well, they're, we can do it one at a time, but they're both linked together. All right, go ahead. I'll let you go ahead and, and make the presentation, and okay. then we'll see how George it goes. George Hernandez, City of Miami Code Compliance Officer. This is a violation that was issued on March 18, 2021, and that would be CC 2021-10348 is the case number. Section 102-367, failing to comply with the business tax receipt issued by the City of Miami Beach. This is in reference to the case that's linked to it, which is CC 2021-10435, conducting a special event without a permit. But this case is failing to comply with the t business tax receipt issued by the city of Miami Beach. Okay. This was a violation that was an email complaint that they were conducting a special event at the rear of the property. And I have documentation of that. All right. I would like to show you. Okay. I think I can get through here. Yeah, you're skinny enough. <laughs> Thank you. You Thank you. You're welcome. Oh, this is a two-sided? Uh? Yes. Okay. So I spoke to this gentleman here. That's side one. Allow me a second. Mr. Jason Jones. And when we spoke and uh, we educated about the complaint, he immediately got the cart, that's the portable cart, he entered it to his property, and he stopped conducting the event. Okay, so and what is the city looking for? Uh, we're looking for adjudication of guilt. The other violation, of course, is conducting a special event which has a fine. All right. And because the actual violation that I issued does not constitute a fine. How, okay. How, how much is a fine? That would be a thousand dollar fine on the special event. Okay. First offense. That is correct. First offense for this first case is two four six three. No, it's for six four. Is six no, I know that, but on six three. It's just an adjudication with no fine. Oh, all right. Just that one will be adjudication of guilt. All right, sir. You're on, please. Uh, on the day in question, I was notified by my staff to come out back uh, to High Tide Beach Bar and Grill, which is our backyard, you know, operation. And uh, for some time since October of 2020, we had had a coffee cart in the back area to service guests passing through to our beach location to come off the boardwalk from their yoga, from their run, whatever it is. Um, a hostess is posted there uh, eight hours a day to give information, direct traffic, uh, seat guests things of that nature. 
Uh, this comes at a loss to us. Uh, after you pay labor and wages, it's, it's an amenity for the hotel guests and anyone passing by. Um, this cart was strategically placed once our new back gate opened back up to not block the egress, to be off of the boardwalk, which is not our property, but still remain on our property. However, it is right outside of our gate, which, uh, unbeknownst to us, we were supposed to conduct any and all business in there. Um, the hostess runs back and forth to the bar, which is well within our property, to get products, things like that, uh, because most everything out there is for display. Um, when I arrived on the scene, then the staff said the, the city was there with a police officer and a code enforcement officer. I went out, and the initial, uh, when I asked what was going on, they said, uh, this gentleman here said, you're serving alcohol out on the, to the boardwalk, which in no way we were. We know the law. We know not to block an egress, not to serve alcohol out to the boardwalk, and we said no. Ma 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 I'm sorry, uh, just so I understand, there's no allegation here that you Correct. were serving alcohol. I believe that was left out, and that was the, the reason for the initial call, Your Honor, uh, was that someone complained we were serving alcohol to the boardwalk because there are tap handles off there. However, this is a La Colombe coffee cart from La Colombe Coffee Company and it is serving cold brew coffee. There is no alcohol sales okay, going on there. That, that, go ahead. He is correct, but that, that falls under the conducting a special event. Right. My that's violation that's... was for the BTR. Right, right, right. Correct. So, so again, it was not the alcohol, so that's not an issue at all. It's the fact that you were conducting a special event. And it, it could have been soft drinks, still was a special event. That's so. And, and, you know, it, with all good faith, we had no intention and no oh, knowledge understood. that we were doing that. It, uh, you know, it, there seemed to be much confusion on, on why we were there, what we were actually doing wrong. And actually, the process took about 40 minutes to, to clarify as we stood outside. Um, I never did find out who filed the complaint. Um, and immediately, as soon as it was made aware to us that even though it was right outside the gate on our property, and we were not blocking an egress, we were not serving alcohol, we were not doing anything wrong, that it wait, did wait, have wait. to, well, wait, as wait, soon as no, we were. Yes, you were, yes, you were. You were conducting a special event without a permit. That, that is wrong. But I, I failed to understand, Your Honor, where, how it was a special event. I've done special event permits here through this, the city of Miami Beach several times for pool parties, for events, for parties, things like that. The, usually you require a number of guest counts and things like that. Uh, you know, posting a hostess at a cart doesn't seem like a special event when it's on your own property. It's serving the exact same things that High Tide is serving there, and in fact, running back and forth. So I'll be honest, I, I don't agree that we were trying to run any sort of special event. We were simply posting well, a hostess uh, up uh, for our backyard restaurant, and that's uh, the entrance point. Let me turn to uh, the city attorney for a second. And is there any requirement, Mr. Rothstein, that a number of people be served? When we're to, how, how do we define a special event? No, um, the ordinance in question is 12-5, um, sub, sub paragraph 1. It shall be unlawful to engage in special events without a special events permit. A special event is defined as a temporary use on public or private property that would not be general, permitted generally or without restrictions throughout a particular zoning district, but would be permitted if controlled with special review in accordance with the section. So it, the city's position is that this car was on public property. It, um, it could be there if they obtained a special events permit for that particular reason, but it's not just tied to the occupancy load as to how many people are, are there or you're serving. Well, I beg to disagree. After reviewing our property lines, it, that is our property. Well, it, you so, know, it, 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 regardless, uh, as soon as I was made aware that that was going to be the, the charge that you can't have this cart here at this spot on your property, please move it inside your gate, we corrected he, it immediately. He confirmed that. We immediately complied. I'm, but, but we're never the, going to, you know, know try to do appreciate anything. It. We appreciate yeah. that. But the fact is that there was a violation. You know, you are appealing something that it appears that it did happen, and you you are actually admitting that it happened, but you seem to be a little confused as to what a special event is, and that's what I asked the city attorney to to read it into the record so we know what it is. And I think the violation did occur. You did comply right away. We appreciate that, but. It did happen. I'll be honest, Your Honor. When I listened to the definition of a special event, it didn't sound like what I was doing. It sounded like I was having something on my property that I would normally do day to day, that we did seven days a week for six months straight. It is a hostess desk. Every restaurant has one. And the definition that the city attorney gave in no way sounds like what we were doing. 
it was a temporary use of public property but it was private property it's our property I, there are no facts there are no facts in the record such as a survey or something to show that it was because your testimony was as soon as you spoke to mr rios that you immediately removed the truck and brought it onto your property so by inference if it wasn't on your property to begin with you wouldn't have moved it onto your property so it had to be on a public property not correct okay. with all due respect my statement was that as soon as we were told it had to be inside that fence our gate even though it was still on our property never once did i did i admit that it was not on our property it is our property however it had to be inside the fence the border to operate as soon as that was made clear to us we complied immediately but that is our property and never once did we try to operate on public property or the city property not once that is that is incorrect so the definition of a special event permit is trying to operate on a something you don't do on a regular basis that has to be controlled that is on public property and this wasn't on public property it was a regular basis it was a hostess desk uh, call it glorified call it a coffee cart but by your definition I did not violate that uh, sorry that's only part of what a special event is a special event is defined as a temporary use on public pro public or private property that would not be generally permitted with without restriction throughout a particular zoning district so it would apply equally to public or private property but only um, and I, I I will defer to inspector Rios as to the difference between bringing it behind the fence and with all due respect, if I can uh, reply to that, if it was something we were doing once in a while, yes, but it's something we've been doing for six months straight. We repositioned our hostess desk for our outside restaurant to that spot, knowing it was our property within our property line. So there was no intent to operate anything that was temporary or on public property or anything that was outside the realm of normal day-to-day -day operation at either restaurant that we operate on that property. Both of them have hostess desks. Both of them have outside hostess desks. We we're doing nothing that we wouldn't normally do day to day. Um, and as soon as it, we were informed, whether it's, it's correct or not, that it had to be inside the fence, as our property line starts here, then it becomes a fence, and we had to move it inside that fence. As soon as that we were told that, by all means, we moved it right inside. But it had been there for six months. So I, I, I honestly disagree that it would require a special event permit to put a hostess at the front of a restaurant on a daily basis. I would like to add something to this. I have a picture I have a picture over here that there's a cutout in the back of the property and you actually immediately placed it inside your on the grass instead on the pavers and the cutout shows that it is your property but the complete pavers belongs to the city the boardwalk the boardwalk Correct. which is the where the pavers your shopping cart was here it was immediately removed to here Will you show him, please? Will you show him, George? That was the coffee cart. was here. But our, our property line ends here. It goes out three and a half feet because that's not the boardwalk. Those are pavers well, before the boardwalk. Again, uh, you know, it could have been public property or private property. This definition that has been entered into the record. Correct. So a special event uh, happened whether it was your property or not. Mm -hmm. Anything else from the city? Can Officer Lacayo add on to this? Yes. Please. Correct, sir. Um, good afternoon, Your Honor. CMI Beach Code Compliance Officer, Alexander Lacayo. So when we arrived, like uh, Officer Hernandez stated, uh, Jason Jones immediately complied. But I have another picture that clearly shows what we're talking about now, if I may submit it. You, you show it to this gentleman yeah, first, understand. and then you can submit it, yes. Correct. You're right, but like the city attorney said, it's either public or private property. As we're doing right. a conducting yeah. a special but event. There, there, I mean, again, I, I don't want this to turn on the fact that it was private or public because a special event could happen. <clears throat> either way. Either way. So that is not the determinant. Uh, Correct. Uh, criteria to uh, establish whether or not the violation happened. Correct. I also wanted to mention, um, Mr. Jones, did you, by any chance, when you, were, when you had that car outside on 
the private property, were you selling to pedestrians on the beach walk or no? If they came up and, and entered the property or they were leaving our property to go out to the beach, either way through that egress with instructions not to block it. Well, so in, okay, so in that case, that's why the violation was issued because technically the car would only belong to guests that are inside the hotel. That's why the violation was issued. Do you understand, do you understand where I'm coming from? Yes, but it, it still, again, being our property, it was an amenity for the guests that's a, you know, I'd, Correct. The guess yeah, would be. I honestly that, disagree that you know because it seems like we were trying to put something out there to to generate all this revenue or something or, or get away with something. We weren't. We were simply repositioned our hostess desk out there. And I, I, I understand what you're saying, sir, but there's a definition as to what a special event is, and uh, based on what I hear, it fulfills that definition. You know, you cannot change and say, well, it wasn't my intention. You were doing something that it appears to fall under what the city defines as a special event. So regardless of it being on my property, that, that's not, not the issue. No, that's not, So yeah. the, other, the other points of it being a special event are that it's something that doesn't happen all the time, but yet I did. We had changed this spot permanently to be in this spot back in October of 2020. So what is the other definition of a special event that is somehow in violation? Or that there was oh, do you, is, let me let me backtrack a little bit in um, on the beach in front of uh, the beachfront of seventeen seventeen Collins Avenue. Is there a beachfront concession there? On the beachfront, yeah, on the actual beach itself. Uh -huh. do, or does the Surf Coma have a um, beachfront yes, concession? Yes, with Boucher Brothers on the other side of the the dune. Yes, right. So that that's part of the issue is that you have this cart out there. Uh, that the public can access when there is a, a current beachfront concession out there. So the second part of w the definition of a special event is that would not be permitted generally or without restrictions throughout a particular zoning district, but would be permitted if controlled with special review in accordance with the section. So we do permit sales on the beach, but there has to be an appropriate beachfront concession. They didn't cite you for not having a beachfront concession. Rather, it was cited as a special events violation. Sorry, but I find that uh, the violation happened as stated and that there's an adjudication as to the one file and there is a payment of a $1,000 fine. Is that correct? $1,000 fine? Yes, Your Honor, $1,000 fine. I can give you, I don't know, I can give you 45 days to pay it. That would be uh, September 28th, okay? Yes, Your Honor. All right, thank you. Thank you. Page 17, number 42. Oh, you're back. Are you ready, uh, Mr. Rao? Your Honor, uh, yes, we are. If, uh, if you, let, let, would you take these with me? Oh, the I'm sorry. Oh, that's right. Yes, sir. Uh, let's, let's make the, the record clear. Let's put the, the case number back on the record. Okay. Um, recalling. On page 19, number 48, SMA 2021-02490-850 Commerce Street. Okay. Well, go ahead, sir. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, my associate has forwarded to the clerk uh, our email correspondence with the finance department, which indicates it. that uh, for the renewal period, that our client made a payment for the renewal period that's at issue today. Um, I, it also, and they ended up forwarding to us a late fee because of the fact that they didn't uh, issue at that time. Uh, in addition, that email chain also gives an indication as to what the confusion was. Um, apparently the finance department was under the impression that our client has or was changing their entity to an LLC, which has not happened and was the reason that the BTR remains issued to the limited partnership that it's in today. 
um, attached to our earlier correspondence with the clerk and code. Here, yes. um, so I. Let me see. Okay, here's one. There's a lot of attachments. Okay. Here's one attachment. I don't know. Can you see? Yeah. It, it, and my associate highlighted the uh, finance department's comments about a payment being made. Okay. And then plus an addition. I apologize, Your Honor. It's a little bit of a convoluted <laughs> history, and we were in contact with the finance department for weeks about this, but that's the, the best summarization I can give. I, I, I can, you know. Late I can continue it if you want to bring in additional information, Mr. Rao, or, or I, I think at this point, based on what I know, there, there was a violation, and I have to impose the fine. But if you want to have more time to research it and bring me uh, more evidence, I'd be happy to entertain it. I, 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 I would prefer to do that if it's okay, Your Honor. I appreciate that opportunity. I, I think we can put it together. I'm, I'm going to be back on September 23rd. So I'm going to... Continue the case of September 23rd to give you an opportunity to present to me why there shouldn't be a fine imposed. Thank, thank you very much, Your Honor. Okay, and I would like to get someone from the finance department here on that Jim day. Okay, Millen. Yeah, Mr. Oh. Mr. Zamora, Tasha Byers, Co Compliance Administrator for the City of Miami Beach. Um, at the break, I had the opportunity to speak to Mr. Jimmy McMillan regarding this case. As Mr. Rawls said, um, when he spoke about the company in question today, which is now listed as the LP as opposed to the LLC, when they have to speak to Mr. McMillan, the client that he's referring to, they, were, they did two applications. One was for the LLC, the other was for the LP. So at the time when code enforcement issued a violation, they had two open applications. So the reason they did not get the violation, the, um, the license renewed, was because they did not complete the paperwork associated with the LLC. So we came along and we issued, I'm sorry, we issued a violation for the LP because they had not finished the process to change the name from the LP to the LLC. So that's where the mishap happened. It's not on the city side. His client failed to complete the process for the LLC. All so right. they, at some point, they changed their minds and decided to go back to keep the LP, and then they paid for the license, and that's why we're here today. I'm Is the license in the LC it. or the LP? Because right. I'm thoroughly confused. LLC. There's no LLC. There's no LLC. Correct. It's, uh, you have a, your client has an LP. That is correct. That is correct. So, well, license you know. is now so uh, okay, I'm under the LP. So I'm thoroughly confused because mm -hmm. this violation is for an LLC. Correct. But, but if they never operated as the LLC and it was during the time that there was an LLP there, the right. LLP didn't get the violation. It's Correct. the LLC, which is an entity that doesn't exist. Correct. But at the time of the issuer, right. they were there. They had opened the business. They were trying to open a business under the LLC, but they never completed the process. So how do we give a violation to somebody that, that... How do we, how do we, um, did we receive a complaint about it? Yeah, we actually received this on an email complaint from the finance department, which I do have the copy of the email. Your Honor, if, well, I may make a suggestion because this is a little confusing. Um, okay. If you grant the continuance to September 23rd, if, if Mr. Rao or Adrian Noto can, can send me over the email, I'll go through it with finance and figure out what exactly happened because... Mm -hmm. I, as we sit here today, I'm still confused over the LLP and the LLC. Okay. okay. Uh, maybe we can reach a uh, I would, of course, do that. And, yes. and, I, and I agree to order, too, maybe, perhaps, so we don't have to hear it. Okay? Absolutely. Okay. Mr. Rao, thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Appreciate, Appreciate it. it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, it's a continuance. Yes. At this point. Until so. September 23rd, Your Honor. Right. And in the interim, we'll I'll reach out to council and we'll figure yeah. this out. And it's September okay. 23rd. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, okay. Uh, let's call number 43, please. Okay. Uh, number 43, SMA 2020-2302.
For 768 81st Street, they made a request for a continuance. All right. <laughs> I have a short question. Perfect. Oh, okay. Let me see. Already. Good Ready? afternoon, Your Honor. Okay. Uh, City of Miami Beach Co Compliance Officer Mindy Blanco, um, uh, the custodian of record. Wait, wait. Question. Sure. Do you have any objections to a continuance? No, Your Honor. Then it's continued. Okay. Uh, let's make it mm -hmm. when, Cindy? October 14th? Okay. Okay. Sorry, but I have a request for a continuance, so. Okay. Now, Perfect. see this one. What did I set this one aside? This one. Let's call number forty-two now. Number forty-two, SMA twenty twenty twenty-three oh one fourteen twenty-four Alton Road. Okay, we have no service here, so so you know we're just going to. Oh, let's see. Wait, wait. Yeah, we don't have, this one doesn't have service. No service? In the, okay. Okay, so we're going to have to reschedule it. To when, Your Honor? Cindy, what's the date, I guess? To, to the chief. What was that? Uh, October 14th. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have these posted, Tasha. The no service? Yeah. So I'm going to send them over to Sylvia, as instructed. Okay. Um, okay. Or do you want me to send these all to you for this afternoon? What's that, for the no services? Yes, you can email them. And let's read into the record now 44 and 45, because that's the same, same thing. I have a request for a continuance. which is SMA 2020-2305 for 731st Street and SMA 2020-2309 for 73st Street. Okay, if well, there's any objections, I will... Uh, is it their first request for continuance? Okay, that's fine. So we're going to continue it to October 14th. And it seems like we're done. Okay. Thank you. Do you have anything else? Uh, Steve, you have anything else? No, Your Honor. Thank you. And we're done for the afternoon. Thank you very much.